Hey everyone, welcome back to The Debrief. I'm Tyler Norton and joined again for the sixth time. We finished up the Boulder season with uh, with Mr. John Bergman. How are you holding up, John? I'm great. I uh, have a little cold, which our loyal viewers will, will remember that you had the cold last week and it seems to have jumped countries and come to me. So I, I am apologize. patient zero. I'm sorry. The <laughs> epidemic has begun. So I apologize in advance, as you did last week for any, or whatever, three weeks ago, for any, uh, you know, honks and hacks now, and are all you, those. Now, like, are you just sick? Like, has, has all of, like, the American climbing community just fallen apart after you guys didn't have an American in finals for the first time <laughs> since you started hosting Vail? Yes. Like, this was the year everybody just fell apart. It's so true. We were on adrenaline for the whole season, and then uh, after Vail, it's just like, oop. You know. Yeah, that was yeah. really too bad. I feel bad for you guys. It's, it's kind of a bummer. Like, I, I went back just to check. Yeah. And yeah, you've managed to have, if not somebody on the podium, at least somebody in finals every year since you started hosting it in 2008. Um, yeah, what happened, man? You know, I don't know. I actually wrote about this uh, this morning in, for an article. I It has to be considered kind of a disappointing season for the Americans from a results standpoint. Sure, so far, I yeah. think there are some positive takeaways that that you could you know things you could take away from the season that are that are positives but overall to not have a an american in the finals at all during the bouldering season especially after there was some really positive momentum from a fan standpoint at the beginning of the world cup season because there had been this big espn uh, partnership broadcasting deal with usa climbing and then the olympics kind of that ongoing buzz uh there was just, it was just like climbing competition climbing was just like in a really good place at the beginning of the season for the Americans and and even after the first cup at uh, Mayringen when uh, if you recall Alex Johnson and Kyra Condi both they they didn't make it to finals but they they were really close I think they they were like seventh and eighth or something like that I, I was actually just having to check the results because when you said that you guys didn't make any finals this year I was like wait a second is that real and yep. yeah holy shit man. Yeah, and and if you remember at Mayringen, we were saying like, oh, they, you know, Kyra and, and and Alex Johnson, they almost made it. So we yeah. were, even though they didn't make it to the finals at that first event, we were still kind of like hopeful. We're like, okay, well, you know, they were on the bubble; it'll happen at some point. And it just, it never did. So it's it's too bad. Mayor, I've been thinking about it because, and I imagine you know, maybe you and I will do a, a kind of like a bouldering season recap in a separate episode if we have enough stuff to talk about. But I was thinking about like, what were the storylines I thought were going to come out of this season after Maringen? Like once we saw the first comp go down, I was like, first of all, I was so psyched about the root setting, right? Like that something about that, that hand crack. And I thought maybe this year with, for some reason, I thought there might be this like incredible renaissance of creativity, like all this really new stuff. Um, Yanya had a great competition, but obviously we weren't talking about a full season streak. Andra had that incredible finish to that event in the, in the jam. And we thought, you know, maybe heading up to the Olympics now that he's back on the comp circuit, just training, maybe he's going to like sweep the season or maybe he'll be like the dominant guy. And like, you know, none of that stuff really turned out the way that we thought it was going to like Andres had a, a I don't know if it's fair to call it a, a disappointing season, but it's not the one he wanted for sure. Yeah. Like he was still doing excellent, but just, I mean, the results aren't exactly what I would have predicted. Like second in the rankings, not that bad, but I don't know. It's it's not what I thought we were going to get out of this thing. In some ways, it was more spectacular than we expected. And, and I think one of the things that I, because b before we started recording, I went back and I read a recap that I wrote of Mayringen uh, from you know weeks ago. And Gotta one get of the those things, clicks, man. Well, and one of the things, <laughs> right? <laughs> one of the things that is still true. I remember that episode. We were wondering, uh, like, who is gonna who is gonna qualify for the Olympics for Japan. Mm. Because it, it, it was like Kokoro Fuji, Rei Sugimoto, like there were all these guys that were just vying for it. And I think that curiosity has only increased as the season has gone on. Sure. Um, yeah. That That is a storyline that was true at Mayringen, and it's ever more true now that the whole circuit is done for the season. Um, Andre's an interesting case uh, because he he had a couple of moments throughout the season where – it could have if like he like narrow misses, right? Like yep. a little if he had just done a boulder here and, and done this boulder here, we would be singing a completely different tune. Uh, and 
but from a standpoint, from the fan standpoint, it was exciting that it really, literally, I mean, it came down to the wire, mm -hmm. you know, for, which was awesome. I blame it all on zones not counting anymore. He would have been yep. our world champion if, if so. <laughs> so. Sorry, I'm just going to yeah. be trolling about the zones thing forever. Uh, yeah, like, I mean, he had close moments. Same thing with Tomoa, though. Like, I think Tomoa's um, season win could have been even more dominant if he hadn't had a couple of those. Like, you just look at those problems, tiny mistakes that cost him a win. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it is. And I mean, yeah, that's how it goes sometimes, right? Like, especially in modern bouldering, like, guess what? Usually the top two people often have four tops. And so it comes down to like, usually not zones, usually to, uh, to like attempts to top. So I, I don't know. It's uh yeah, it's been a, it's been a squeaker for the men's side and I guess kind of for the women's in terms of who's coming up second. But I think the, the, the big theme for me is like this year definitely solidified Fanny Gibert. Um, and part of that might be, again, in the absence of Shauna Coxie and Miona Naka. Um, but I, I, so getting ahead of myself, I'm just so badly hoping the world championships for bouldering this year, we see Miho and Shauna there with Akio and Fanny and Yanya in like really good form because. I haven't had enough chances to see those guys go head to head. To me, that's like, those are the big five. Um, and as awesome as this achievement is by, uh, by Yanya, just finishing the, the six world cups and doing a first ever season sweep, locking it in with another world championship gold in bouldering, you know, bookending this season. Cause at the, at the end of last season, she won the bouldering world championships. She sweeps this season, does it again. Then I'd be very happy to call her like, this is the greatest period of bouldering from one person ever. I'm still not there yet right now. Like I honestly look back at even just on a star and I'm, I'm not sure that, uh, that Yanni is necessarily ahead of that just yet. Yeah. Just for, because of circumstances, it feels, it does feel like we never, maybe Munich a little bit, but we never really got all of the blue chip, uh, women athletes, like like competing against each other it's certainly not consistent consistently this season you know uh -huh. because miho was injured for for a number of competitions because of her shoulder and then her other shoulder uh shauna was injured it, it just feels like yeah it, it, that's a really good point and i hadn't really thought about it yet but like can we is it too much to ask to actually <laughs> just get a competition that has fanny shauna miho akio and yanya like all healthy and then choose and your six. Like, I don't even care. There's so many like women that could, that could take that sixth spot, but that is the top five, like yeah. for sure. And not having Mio and Shauna at the same event, having each of them only for like what, two comps each this year. I think Shauna yeah. was at the first two and then Miho was Wu Jiang and Vail. Like, yeah, it's not enough. I like, I, I hate saying it, but it's for me, it's a bit of an asterisk of like how, how like rock solid Yanya's record is because she hasn't had that full team. Whereas I look at yeah. kind of like dynasties in the past and you had just a truckload of strong people trying to tear these people down. Um, so yeah. In, in this, in this hypothetical um, like world-class final that we're putting together here. Yeah. Who, who is your sixth? If you had to choose it now, uh, assuming everybody's healthy, everybody's in top form, uh, you know, we have Fanny, Miho, Akio, Yanya, and Shauna. Who's that sixth person that makes it to the to a finals? Shit. That's tough. Uh, so, like, I think based on rankings, it's probably somebody like Futaba Ito. Yeah. But, it, well, as, uh, just if we want to follow, like, the tradition of 2019 bouldering is we have to have the designated, like, rookie climber that's like, <laughs> never done a finals before. Sure. That has to be the sixth. I don't know. Somebody, you know, some... For the fun of it, if the if the six was Alex Johnson, that would make me crazy happy because then you have a World Cup winner, right? And you've got another old guard person like Accio. Um, yeah. That would be sick. Oh, that's my six, definitely. Alex that would be Johnson. awesome. Yeah, that would be that would be really cool. Um, Provided it's not like an upset thing, because I don't want somebody to squeak into finals and then just be scrubs. Like I want it to be yeah, a, a well earned and uh, and high performance finals from number six. Yeah, that'd be a great, that'd be a world-class crusher crew there. So maybe we'll see it. That'd be phenomenal. I can only hope. Uh, yeah, to have those six. You know, going back to your point about the Americans, um, one of the things I wanted to ask you was, because, you know, I've, I'm in the bubble here. I, I was part of that hype from ESPN and all that after the, the USA Nationals. 
from somebody that's not in the United States, how do you assess? I don't want to put you on the spot too much, no, but like, how do you, how do you, how do you assess the Americans season? So Boring. I am pretty like bearish on American climbers in the first place. I always look at you guys and I'm like, why do you guys spend so much time outside? You've got um, like genuinely amazingly strong talents in your country and everybody just like fiddles around in Boulder eating Whole Foods and like doing Alpine bouldering or whatever. I don't know. I'm like really critical of, of American competition climbing. I think like, I don't understand it. I don't, you get these like peaks that you saw with people like Megan Muscarenus who has now just disappeared. I'm assuming she's like, she's in school and she's loving that stuff. And she's probably incredibly like talented with, uh, with those things, but I miss her. Somebody like Nathaniel Coleman having that, that upstart season in 2015 where he followed up Toronto with Vale or I can't remember, maybe it was the other way around. Um, but the last time you saw somebody like that, I genuinely thought was top tier was Alex Puccio. Um, and I don't know, I, I, it's hard because you guys have so many excellent climbers and there are young climbers coming up with Steezy Bailey and Ashima and stuff. But um, I don't know, I think you guys have a, a ton of publicity, you've got a huge market, there's a lot of attention given to your climbers, but I feel like not just this season, but in seasons past, like it just doesn't live up to the hype for the most part. You get those occasional mm -hmm. little things, what Ashima took a silver in a lead season, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I wish you guys were, because there are people I want to cheer for inherently. It's nice to have people that speak the English language doing really well. It's hard to interview people that are other languages. Um, yeah. And you have a lot of like charismatic, good looking, like photogenic climbers. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm kind of yeah. bummed too. I would have loved to see, see more final stuff from you guys because there are a lot of really good stories. But yeah, and, and I'm actually pretty surprised um, that. That more that the Americans didn't do better at Vale. I think we talked about this in when we were doing the Munich recap and we were getting ready for for Vale. Um, Americans usually do really well at at yeah. at this competition, um, dating back from the first the first time the World Cup was ever there in 2008. Alex Johnson won it in a kind of a legendary performance. Uh, then last year, Puccio won it. Uh, yeah, Daniel yeah. Woods won his Daniel World Woods Cup there. Won it in, um, yeah, a couple times. Megan Muscarenus. I can't remember if Nathaniel actually won one in Vale or if he was just podiumed. I can't remember at this point. Yeah, I don't think I don't. I, it's hard to remember, but I, yeah. Megan for sure. I think she won in two thousand. Well, two of them, right? Fifteen and sixteen, I think, yeah. were the two years that she won there. Um, I'm sure people will let us know. If I want to say sixteen, seventeen. I feel like fifteen. Maybe was it was too sixteen, early. seventeen. I don't. Uh, but the point being, the Americans traditionally do really well in Vail and mm -hmm. uh and they just they um they didn't this time there were just yes. a lot of like you know I, I feel like there were a couple boulders where Alex Johnson was she was really close and if she'd had 30 more seconds or or if we had been in the four plus time time uh structure still mm -hmm. she might have gotten it but uh, and in fairness like you guys came incredibly close like nathaniel coleman yes. finished eighth in semis what like four four attempts behind sean who squeaked in sixth and then yeah. natalia grossman who i don't think has ever made a bouldering finals before um but what was she behind she was behind by she was... like, literally two attempts yeah yes. two attempts she top. she finished in seventh and nathaniel coleman finished in eighth i'm looking mm -hmm. at my notes here um, and even like, uh, you know, so at Margot Hayes was 11th, Alex Johnson was 13th, Kyra Kondi was 14th. That's, that's not like way, way down in the rank. Yeah, like that's, no. you know, like to your point, that's, we're talking separation of like one or two zone holds in some cases. Yeah, so, real. um, but nonetheless, but not good enough for the crowd. Well, enough. that's that one thing I was surprised by is the crowd was still huge, right? Like yes. there were, well, maybe not. Cause I mean, when you go to Vail, it's just it, that mountain festival is just full of people that like watching that kind of stuff. So it probably doesn't even matter who the climbers are. There's just going to be a ton of people watching it. Um, but yeah, I was, I, I was certainly a little disappointed. Fortunately, our boy, Sean McCall was there to represent North America Yes. in, uh, I, in honestly, so this is maybe not a, like a, I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, get flame for this, but it felt like it was a good wrap up and, I, I watching him on uh, men's number one. He I actually clipped a bit of this. Um, he was like he was he was juicing this problem. He was gonna get the most out of this experience. This is him on men's number one. Twenty seconds left on the clock, and oh, he's yeah. just like he had touched the top already, 
But with this little time, he... And actually, when you watch this, he did a really good job. Uh, it didn't quite make it happen, but just got the crowd really psyched about, you know, this last second attempt, three seconds left. Anybody that's touched those holds at the top knows it's probably not something you want to dino to, but I mean, he's a strong dude. But uh, yeah, Sean was a great ambassador for North America again, and I had fun watching him, especially on that problem. So can you play, can you play that back again? Because I remember... Yeah. I was surprised when he was going for that last attempt with with only 20 seconds or whatever. Yeah. But as he neared the top, he kind of just launches uh, almost just like doesn't even make a huge effort to secure the, the top hold. But I thought he has three seconds left. If he actually would have taken three seconds to to like... That's I, fair, actually. You know, I, I thought I, I feel like he, you know... When he got to that, the second to last hole, the big volume thing, he was just like, oh, screw it, you know, and he, like, just guns for But I was like, if he would have actually, like, made a, taken another second or two, and I know we're talking about really kind of micro beta here, but taking a second or two to actually really try to secure that last hold, uh, rather than just kind of doing this Hail Mary move, um, I think he might have, he could have I... actually secured it, maybe. I think you're right that it's possible. Um, sorry. Um... I, I, I don't know where the clock was, and who knows, maybe he was in a body position where he couldn't quite see it, but I think it's also just like one of those things where the margins are just so small. Yeah. Um, like, possible, yes, but practically, I don't I don't know. If he, like, he obviously gave it a freaking amazing go. Um, yeah. So And it's easy, yeah. for, it's easy for us to sit here in our chairs, you know, eating our yeah. Cheetos and be like, obviously. oh, he just, he just, you know, take three more seconds. Can, but, can, can you uh, imagine this if we, we were actually just like eating the entire time we recorded this? <laughs> we'll do that I, next time. I, I actually had a friend who was going to go to Vail and I, I said I, it'd be really cool if you could climb on the problems because I, I've always kind of just wondered you know the grades of all these and and that freaking hard last, man and that last move in particular for that problem i remember wondering like i wonder how how tough that last move really is yeah. obviously really hard if sean's struggling on it so yeah i've never i've never walked up to a world cup problem and been like oh yeah all right yeah. it's always been just like oh this is like a, a different level of humanity you are like a different species to be able to do this stuff um yeah. This was this was a really big moment and Im important moment for Sean though. I feel like in terms of keeping his Olympic not maybe not his Olympic hopes, but certainly the hopes of like his his fans. Yeah. Um his well, Olympic push because we had been talking I don't think it's any secret that you know he's he's probably nearing the the end or at least the kind of the backside of his competition career just in terms of yeah. age and results and stuff. Um uh, this was his 150th World Cup competition, yeah, that's which is incredible. Um, so I think people were starting to like, like, how realistic is it that he'll have a shot at the Olympics? Uh, but this, I think, this really um, uh, gives a lot of momentum to the to the idea that he has a he's still a yeah. Crusher. I had him at like in my head. I basically had him at a coin toss. I don't. Uh, he will not get to the Olympics through the world championship. He's not going to get one of those spots. So he has to either get in through the Toulouse qualifier, which means he has to be in the top 20 of climbers after you remove the world championship top seven. Um, so like, a, a, I think I remember his coach was telling me that they estimated uh, based on past results that if you're within the top 30 to 35 ish climbers um, in the world rankings, uh, in the combined world ranking that you will very, very likely go through to, to the Toulouse qualifier, right? And so previously, I honestly basically gave it 50-50 that he would get to the Olympics. But now with this result, with knocking down his his uh, his worst boulder result and adding in a sixth place, when the math is all done by multiplication, that's like a really huge deal. That's going to bump yeah. him up a lot. So I'm now edging towards more likely than not that he's at least going to go through to the Toulouse qualifier. Whether or not he comes top six in that is like harder to tell because with the math from his last couple comps, again, he would basically be riding the bubble. If you take out the top seven climbers, he's always kind of like mid teens ish uh, as an average. So it's still kind of sketchy. Um, I also don't think that if it went down to the North American qualifier, I, for some reason, just that like U S magic, you guys in LA, if it's held in your country, I feel like one of your like scrubby kids born in the two thousands or some shit will like somehow come out and steal it from uh, from a veteran like him. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it made me really optimistic just from a math perspective. Like his ranking is going to benefit huge from this. 
And if he can have a good rope season, which I, I do believe he could, um, then uh, then I think he's set at least to get through the Toulouse qualifier. So, yeah, this, yeah. this one made me happy from that, from that side. And he's been working on his, his speed climbing too. So, I, you know, there's... I... Yeah, with, with the speed, like, he might get a couple improvements, but he's never... Like, he's not... Like he's, I think he's hovering right around where he should with the speed stuff. He may be able to knock off like one or two ranking places. Yeah, who knows? I don't know. But it's yeah. it's going to come down to how low can you drop your lead results because that's almost certainly going to be what um uh what like what changes the math for him. Like he needs. Well, I I'm not going to say I know what he needs. I'm not going to do the math, but he needs to climb really well and and show what he's done in the past. Um, yeah. But I do consider him more of a lead climber than a boulderer. So. I'm. Yeah. Uh, I got my hopes riding on lead season. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch him in particular uh, as as the Olympics grow nearer. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, uh, I. I. Nothing would make me happier than having a Canadian at the Olympics. I think it would be the crowning achievement of his career. I think uh, it would be a huge deal for Canadian climbing. Yeah. I. I've been skeptical the last couple of years of whether or not it can happen, but I think. Uh, I think this weekend was a, a really good step. So um, yeah, I hope he's, I, I'm sure he is as psyched as, as the rest of us. And and he's kind of one of the guys that I can remember for the longest time. He was always thought of as an all around comp climber. I mean, this yeah. was, this was before anybody was really, th- there was a lead or a boulder specialist was dabbling in speed. So we just kind of have to remove speed for a second. But um you know, I remember like four or five years ago, people were saying he's he's equally as proficient on boulders and ropes. And and that was, you know, before the Olympics was really kicked into high gear, all the talk about it. So, um, yeah. no, that's that's totally true. And he won a couple of the combined world championship titles a couple of years in a row. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to find it right now. I don't. So I don't actually put that much weight in that stuff because I don't think of combined as a sport. Like I I I don't know. It's kind of like, again, you might do like averagely well in everything or you might do really well in some and terrible in others so i don't pay too much attention to that as a metric um but he did i i i want to say off the top of my head like 2014 and 2016 he was the combined overall uh guy um let me see just so i can not sound like an idiot i should probably look this shit up 2012 2014 2016 he was the gold medalist for the combined and again that wasn't a single discipline that was them all separate right so you didn't have a combined finals like we're gonna see this year um yeah, so yeah that's but- cool he is he's always been active in all three disciplines um so that might give him some heads up at least in an experience term like he's not new to the speed wall or anything like that he knows how to do all these things yeah. um but like you know winning the combined it's not because he had exemplary boulder seasons or lead seasons or speed seasons it's because he did well enough in each of them so Yep, which is what matters in the Olympics in this this weird format. That Except we find you ourselves. you actually have to get yourself into the top six, right? Or in this for the world yeah. championship side, the top seven, right? Like so, his math might have been he was fourteenth, fourteenth, fourteenth. That might not be good enough in this case. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, right. that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, I, we kind of like grazed past it, but I guess we should just acknowledge that Yanya Garnbret is the first person to. Uh, to sweep a bouldering season, albeit well, one of the shortest bouldering seasons in history, but she did it, man. So I have to chime in here because there's been a kind of a glitch in the matrix. Uh, I Now, I don't know if this is true, but there are rumblings online that Robin Urbisfield swept in 1994. Now, a couple the of things. Fuck? A couple of caveats. <laughs> First of all, um, that was not... That, the, the IFSC did not exist back yeah. then. It, it was under the UI. The World Cup was under the UIAA. So that does not take anything away from this designation that Yanya is the first one to sweep the World Cup because in the IFSC iteration, you know, she is. Yeah. Uh, also, because there are those results, you you can. It's very easy to find out who won the overall season um, for those old years, ninety three, ninety four, but it's. I don't think I haven't come across anywhere where there are the results from every individual. Yeah, world whoever top. is saying that, literally, fuck yourself, unless you publish your sources for because, like, the IFSC is really sorry. The IFSC website is the only source for the rest of us, like plebs, 
to find out this information. And so like if you for some reason have these archived results that the IFSC doesn't have or the public doesn't have, can you like put that somewhere on the internet so the rest of us can see it? From from an IFSC standpoint, basically the results effectively start in 1998 when they ran a circuit called the Top Rock Challenge. Um, how many events was that? That was like one, one, two, three, four, five, six events uh, in 1998. Um, and then the year after they become World Cups, they title them as World Cups. I found for some reason in here, I have a result from 1995 from a single one-off event. Um, so there were like, there were obviously bouldering competitions, but the results are like, either don't exist or they're in somebody's memory or in a PDF file of a scan of some paper from a typewriter. I don't know. Right. But like those, if we want to, like we're telling the story from within the results we have, if there's some asshole out there that has these archives and hasn't shared them or worse, if the IFSC has results from events that they like aren't publishing, that makes me upset. I don't, and I don't know. Uh, the, yeah, it, it, there's no way to really know it without seeing those results, without having those results readily available. We have to trust. Uh, I mean, if nothing else, Charlie Bosco on commentary, who it, it is not maybe not an employee of the IFSC. I mean, he's a he's a broadcaster for the IFSC, which I don't know how that. I think that, actually that, he is employed by them. We'll talk about that okay. later. But yeah. okay. But the point is, if if he who is representing the the IFSC uh, from a uh, I don't know, from a delivery standpoint, if he's saying Yanya is the first one to do it, then it's like we have to, you know, we have to go by that. We have to go by what the IFSC is telling us. And well, yeah, and I mean, the, 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 the nice thing that Charlie would have access to or people that have spoken to Charlie is that there are these guys in the IFSC org um, that have been around forever and that have seen a lot of this stuff and know the context, right? Like you have the Graham Aldersons and like they were talking about like Didi Dulac, like an old champion from right. France. These guys are coaches now or they're technical delegates or they're JPs. Um, they've been around and they can give that context. And I know they're constantly talking. Like you had that moment in this event where I think it was the, the jury president uh, came up to talk to Charlie to tell him, hey, there's going to be an appeal or there has been an appeal on Miho's zone or whatever. And then a few um, in Munich when, um, fuck, what was her name? Last name Kazbakova was in finals. Mm -hmm. And they totally stole. I thought I was going to be the only one with this trivia, but um, uh, Graham Alderson piped up to him that, hey, she's the daughter of these two former World Cup winners. And she might be the first time somebody's been in a finals that was the offspring of World So anyway, all I'm saying is there is a lot of like knowledge you know, at these events and on these uh, scenes. So I would hope that if that wasn't true and it's a storyline that we've seen like literally coming for, for months now. Right. Um, I feel like somebody would have actually clarified if that was true. And I hope it's yeah. not just on the pedantic point of we didn't call them world cups back then. It would be like, it'd be nice to know if there was some structure from before and somebody had swept it. Cause that would be really interesting. And especially if it was an American, that would be like really cool. Yeah, they. D I'm pretty sure they did call them World Cups back then. Um, I, but and and to be clear, I'm not. You know, you and I, we aren't confirming this or denying it. Other than I'm just saying it's it's something that people are rumbling about. Um, if I, anybody makes any claims like that, this is to everybody. Get them to take a picture of whatever paper they have. And put it on the internet, share it on like a subreddit or share it on Root Setters Anonymous or, you know, I don't, yeah, there's no like good like forum for yeah. climbers. Just put it on Facebook and tag everybody you know. I don't know. Yeah. Um, share that shit because, you know, it sucks that this stuff is hidden. Especially if, I mean, if it is true, we certainly want to give credit where it's due. Not, I mean, Robin Herbisfield is, she's, <laughs> she's got plenty she's, of credit. She's not she's lacking in credit, credit. But this is not something that, that I have seen in, in my kind of research and fandom, this is not something I've seen ever attached to her name as mm -hmm. a, an, a, somebody who swept a whole season. It's yeah. if, you know, so um, that'd be just another accolade that, that if it's true, she, you know, she, we should recognize it. So, um, but all, but all that aside, let's kind of put that out. And in, in, unless, like you said, unless somebody can give us some, some more raw data, um, let's talk about Yanya. Yes. Uh, 
it was an incredible performance. I think in particular because she looked really vulnerable at times. Like it was not a gimme. Um, and you could kind of see it getting in her head a little bit. Like she kind of, she looked flustered at times. Um, and she also, once she did clinch the, after women's four and she had won the whole season, the, she had swept it, you know, she started tearing up and getting really emotional. It was, it was kind of the most, uh, human that we've ever seen Yanya, I think it, it went all packaged together, right. With the struggle, uh, and then kind of this release at the end, she actually, uh, it was nice. She actually, you know, she, cause we think of her as kind of this uncanny talent, um, but we kind of got to see her humanized a little bit at Vail, which I thought was really neat. I would, I think Charlie mentioned that he had done an interview with her uh, in Colorado, and I'm really interested to hear that if it does come out because I, I hope he asked about her headspace regarding the fact that she's, you know, she's no longer judged by whether or not she wins World Cups. She's judged by whether she loses them. She's judged by whether she wins historic achievements, right? And she obviously knew that this one was coming down the pipe and then Vale was it, right? Um, there was obviously pressure there. I'm not sure how much of that she put on herself. Also, the shoulder thing was kind of wigging me out. I wasn't sure if that was a, a, a thing she had incoming or if that, that happened during the comp. Um, but yeah, sure, you can completely imagine that somebody in that situation would be under some pressure and it only serves to humanize her as a climber and it makes the story better if we can like tell that story, if that stuff would come out in an interview. So hopefully, um, hopefully somebody gets a chance to like actually talk to her about that stuff. Um, she, she said something really interesting too, uh, in the post post interview or whatever she said, uh, she said something like, I still have the motivation uh, and, and that it was not something I thought it was interesting because it was not prompted by Charlie or Eddie or whoever was doing the interview, um, that she said that. And so it made me wonder, like, is that something that other people have asked her? Like, Hey, are you still motivated? It was just an, and I know there's like, you know, a little bit of a language barrier and stuff. Um, but it was just interesting that that was kind of the, the, the talking point that she said, she said, like, I still have the motivation. And I, when I heard that, I was kind of like, Oh, well I didn't, you know, I never really wondered if you had the most like it was just an interesting uh insight there yeah i you know i it's an interesting topic because especially coming out of the lead discipline from last season where there was talk about like oh things are too easy why do i top every fucking climb this isn't fun like what what is challenging me and again it, it kind of falls into that line of she's not you know she's not like hunting for success anymore. She's trying to like almost have to defend herself from failure. It's that problem of once you're definitively on the top, it's way harder to stay on top than it is to, to like get to get there. Um, and I, I don't, and I've been curious, like, would she stay motivated if she felt like the bouldering season was too easy? Would she stay motivated if she felt like the lead season was too easy? Um, there is a, a really big carrot being hung in front of her with that Olympic possibility. That said, it is like a year ahead of that, so I don't know if her performance right now necessarily matters. Um, she just has to qualify, which isn't that hard for somebody as talented as her. But yeah, the motivation question has been a really interesting one for me because at some point you say, when do you stop getting a kick out of winning World Cups? And when do you say, I want to go not just be the first female ascent to shit, I want to go like F.A., the hardest crap that's like ever been seen on Earth. Um, mm -hmm. she has the potential to be that person. And, um, I, I, I don't know how long, uh, I, I'm, I'd really like to know what her genuine goals are in competition climbing. I imagine an Olympic gold medal is one of them. After that, is she interested in two? Like how long does she stay in this game? Because it's starting to look easy. This was one mm -hmm. of those few comps where it felt like she had to like fight for it a little bit, but if she just stays in top form and keeps wrecking, what what do you get out of it on a personal level? Yeah, and it's funny because we say we're saying that she struggled in Vale, and it, like, when <laughs> yeah, you look at the yeah. results, it's like, <laughs> oh, she took two attempts to top this one instead of flashing it. You know, it's like, yeah. okay, it's it, in in context, but it's, I mean, another thing that goes un kind of unreported is just what a grind it is to do the, a World Cup season. Um, like all the travel, all the jet lag, all the. I mean, you think about how hard that can be, that would be if you were just a kind of a, a regular Joe doing mm -hmm. it. But then on top of that, if you're a, an elite level athlete, you have other things where like you have to eat 
certain foods, you, your, your diet becomes really important, the amount of sleep you're getting becomes really important. All of these things uh, make the traveling for the World Cup a real grind, and I don't think you would hold it against anybody if they didn't want to do it after a couple years, especially if for Yanya, where there's this, there's this uh, alternative where it's like, well, you could crush, you could attempt to, to make uh, history doing hard routes outdoors, in which case you're traveling on your own schedule, right? You're traveling with like an entourage of friends, presumably who, who, you know, it's just a lot more fun. Uh, it, yeah, it, that would be, it's like, which one would you rather do, right? The uh -huh. jet lag, the, the, the grind of the season, or you get to travel to like pristine mountains and just like kind of on your own schedule and have fun and, and make crazy first ascent videos. Yeah, right? totally. Like, yeah. yeah. And I don't think this is really going to be a, a, like a, a serious career question until after the Olympics is over. Um, but like, yeah, it's uh it is an important one for somebody with her talent is at some point being the best in like a, it's ridiculous to call the world cup circuit, a small pond, but being a big fish and what she's kind of proving to be a small pond, she might want to get out there and try and challenge herself with something new. So we'll see what happens. Um, for me, the, the sweep of the season has been great. I think I will give it to her as the most dominant, like bouldering era ever. If she also wins the world championship, um, here's like a little pedantic question. People have been calling this like a, a grand slam, uh, just mm. by her winning the six world cups. Do you f like, I'm not that I have a problem with that necessarily, but I kind of wish that the world championships was included in that. Just that, I don't know, a grand slam to me, I guess from tennis, it's the four, big tournaments right so there's like right. a, a french and english and american and australian event um mm -hmm. and you have to win all four of those the the world cups i don't know maybe it's just because we've gotten so used to there being so many of them that it's like well you know whatever but i anyway i for me the big achievement is if she wins world championships then i think she'll be the first women woman to win two bouldering world championships back to back albeit it's one of those rare circumstances where there are a world championship just a year apart that normally doesn't happen. It's normally two years apart. So there's another like little asterisk. Um, yeah. But uh, I, that's the big one for me. And again, like we said earlier with a strong field, then I'll be uh, psyched off my face. Uh, yeah. I would not consider it a grand slam equivalent just because in tennis, the, you know, each of those tournaments has kind of, their those own tournaments are unreal too. And, like... they, and they have their own nuance and structure. And, sure. And, you know, it's, it's not like, like world cups as much as they they go around to different countries and stuff they mm -hmm. all just kind of follow the same format um mm -hmm. and the same structure whereas you know tennis it's on different surfaces and all this stuff and yeah but i get you so, you can equivalent that to like the the differences in walls and the differences in holds and root setters and stuff but for me i think it's just because like each i like a a, a tennis open or whatever the frick they're called that's like a it's a big field of people it's like elimination brackets it's a grind to get to the finish right whereas when i look at a climbing world cup i think they're fairly random events with like so you have two different groups for qualifiers so you're not even qualifying to semifinals on the same problems and then when you get to semifinals we totally ignore all of your results from previously and you just do it all over again like a free buy and then you get to finals and we ignore all your results from the past again so I, ju I just don't think of it as uh, as like in a as a competition format with as much integrity as those where it is like a slog to get to yeah. the end of those things. Um, it's it's I, too bad that oh sorry I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I got nothing it's, else to it's say. It's too bad that the uh, the Olympics is in the combined format in the sense that if it if the Olympics had different medals for each discipline, you could make a case for a, the Grand Slam equivalent being you win your your own your country's nationals yeah you win the world cup season yeah in, just in that yeah. discipline you win the world championship and then you get an olympic medal in that discipline like yeah, that be would sick. be a grand slam even without the national thing but just yeah win the season win the championship yeah. win the olympics like that'll be yeah let's keep an eye on that for next year like that'll be yeah. uh that could be interesting do i think it's gonna happen i don't know but uh it could I, be cool. I would i mean would it happen is somebody other than yanya I don't know. Like Yanya is kind of the only person that you could see at, at the moment being in that sort of conversation. And she's really a once in a lifetime talent. Um, yeah, so. maybe I like, who knows what it, it, for the women. Yeah. I, 
yeah, I just never know, man. It's again, like she, she came out of nowhere, right? Like, guess what? She just like shows up when she ages into open, starts crushing right away. And then like two years later or three or whatever it is now, um, just like well, on fire. Well, she came out of nowhere, but she, she, she came out of, she came into a system that has a heritage of being a, a, a phenomenal, like the Slovenian climbing team sure. has a history of being great. Like, like I don't know if you have a Yanya that talent coming in a, um, a, a national federation that's not, say, Slovenia, Japan, Germany, France, maybe U.S. I don't know. I would like just stop it, at Slovenia and Japan. Like I would okay, stop yeah. literally right there. Like, I don't know if Yanya reaches the heights that she does. Um, y you know, I think she, you could say she came out of nowhere, but at the same time, she came out of nowhere into a system um, that that was very good at, I mean, the best in the world at, like, fostering that talent. Yeah, and, and no, that's, that's so I guess what I'm saying is, like, I, it could happen, I feel like I'm out of focus. It could happen again, and you look to, like, the Japanese team. And you mm -hmm. look to whoever the young Slovenian kids are right now and maybe a country like Austria, but like, I, I don't know. I think it's, I don't want to get into, into too much about like how kids are changing climbing or whatever, but I, I it would be really cool to see if we had another uh, little upstart climber show up uh, soon. And that said, I should probably acknowledge that Yanya was tearing up the youth circuit before she got to the open circuit as well. Just, I honestly don't pay attention to the youth circuit. That doesn't interest me very much. But well, it'll happen at some point. Uh, yeah. Who knows? 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. I mean, that's how sports goes. There's always a there's It'll always be sooner than later. Better. Yeah, there's always somebody that that takes it to the next level mm -hmm. um, and things that we think are incomprehensible now. Um, you know, somebody will do it. Somebody yeah. will somebody will do whatever the Grand Slam equivalent. And it's it, it, that's that's how it goes. That's the progression. Yeah, totally. Um, just to, to throw it off, I just want to say uh, about the broadcasting. Tiff Melius for the women's final was excellent. Yes. I thought she paired up great with Charlie. Um, I, I don't know if it's just having somebody that's been like on the circuit for like a really long time. Uh, somebody that's a bit more adult. I thought she did like an, an unreal job. Um, the insight that she was bringing was awesome. Um, and she's like kind of an honorary Canadian because she lives here. So I might be like she, tilted, but she's great. She was great. And what was, uh, I'm trying to think, what was the gentleman's name who was doing the semifinals? I don't know. I think I let me. I want to give credit where it's due. Um, I skimmed through to look at the problems, but I didn't watch. The Ahmed whole thing. Ahmed Torre, I think, was his name. Okay. Um, and he, I recognized him. He's done other some commentary. I feel like I've seen that name yeah. and stuff. But anyway, yeah. Um, but I thought he did a great job as well. I I think the commentary. What was, was his style? Like, what uh, is he uh, like a competitor or a coach? What was his deal? He uh, I. I I don't know off the top of my head to be honest, but he he knew his stuff for sure, and he knew the competitors. Um, Is he American? He seemed to be a route setter. Uh, I don't know if he was American or uh, he. I, I didn't detect you know an accent, but okay, I'm, not, cool. I'm not sure. Um, but he was great too. I th I thought the commentary this week this weekend was just spot on in every round. Really nice. R really good pairings with Charlie's uh, with Charlie stylistically in. Yeah. So. I'm trying to find this person now. I really want to know. I don't want. I, I want to say maybe anyway. he's commentated at Vale in the past. Okay. Uh, and I think he comes from a route setting background. Cool. Uh, and maybe you know somebody, maybe Charlie, will let us know in the comments uh, <laughs> a little bit more. Or we but... could. I could probably just watch semifinals and maybe then I'd yeah find out. But uh, but yeah. Um, what else was there? To, I guess we should like actually look at some of the problems. Uh, yeah. And let me see if I had any other kind of over broad um well i will say that i think one of the underreported storylines is that is you mentioned it already but the yanya's shoulder like she actually said that sure. she, she heard a pop which is like really that's, when did you yeah, hear that they said that on commentary oh, um they, they said that you know so and so heard that yanya said that um if that's the case that's a lot more severe than just like a hurt shoulder you know like that could be really bad maybe yeah and um I remember thinking that at this point, if we continue going in the current trajectory, the only thing that can stop Yanya from just continuing to dominate and presumably dominate the Olympics as well would be herself, whether it's a lack yes. of motivation or an injury. Yeah. And 
Uh, so if she's got a, a tweaked shoulder, that's oh, that's almost like worst case scenario. So we or could be worst case scenario. So we certainly hope that's not that's it's not bad. But yeah, and it's uh, never good. Again, she like she climbed through it after. So when she comes off this problem, you'll see that she's like shaking it out and stuff. Um, but if she takes this month off again we have like a, almost a full month before the first uh rope world cup of the season um so i think she's got plenty of time to recuperate so yeah you just see here like obviously trying to work something out in that shoulder and then you see it later when they're in the in the call zone and stuff um yeah I, it doesn't worry me too much but it does raise the question and again with very little info so if anybody has more info feel free to give it but um if it is a kind of I don't know if repetitive strain is the right word, but if part of the issue is committing to every single event, um, then that might be something she reconsiders for later in the season. Maybe at some point you say, okay, maybe doing all six lead World Cups isn't a big deal right now. Maybe I should just be focusing on the World Championship. Um, she yeah. might have to. She might have to make a hard decision um, once the lead season starts. What would be a more preferable objective to try and sweep the lead season or to try and get an olympic gold medal oh 100 percent olympic the, gold Jesus, yeah she'd yeah. probably choose the medal um obviously but uh i don't know it's hard it's hard to say like you said we don't know we don't know much info about it but yeah. um that was it just kind of like uh unfortunate. it is it is rough like it feels like foreshadowing a little bit right you're worried that like oh I hope this doesn't become a storyline later in the year. You yeah. just hope everybody recovers and everybody has good physios and they've just developed good habits. You sleep a lot, you recover. Well, I have, so. it's like flashbacks of Miho from last year because mm -hmm. she kind of started with these little shoulder tweaks. And then before you know it, she's, she's out for, you know, most of this season. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully Yanya's just smart about it and trains uh, as sort of soft, softly as as she needs to while it heals up yeah I, if dude. anything <clears throat> excuse me if there's any silver lining it's that it happened in the last comp yeah. of the season <laughs> of the sure. circuit so she can rest now as opposed to happening in the middle of the circuit you yeah know. Yeah, so. no, that's uh, that's definitely fair. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I just because we're on women's number three, I loved this problem. I'm gonna actually, I'm just gonna play Fanny's attempt on this. Um, you you mentioned women's number three as something you might want to talk about. Did you? Yeah. Was this one of your favorite problems? Did what? What about this climb? I'm gonna play Fanny's attempt yeah. right now. Yeah, and I can talk through. This was my favorite climb. I mean, if you can, you pause it now. Uh, I don't know if I can. Okay. Well, just look at it. Just look how aesthetic it is. Um, I've got a picture the, of it I can show later, but yeah. Black and white tool techs. Um, I like that it's it's volumes, but there's a lot of them, whereas I feel like a lot of times aesthetically it's volumes are very, you know, minimalistic. Um, I mean, there's just count it like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's like 10 volumes there, not, not even counting the like screw on volumes. Um, so it just looks cool. Um, I liked that there was a kind of a diversity of movement and, and then going up to these, these like pillars here that she's doing right now. This was really cool. Um, this here coming around the arete is, is the part I wanted to pay attention to because Fanny and Yanya did very different beta. Yeah. So like through this section, Fanny's basically going to adjust herself and then eventually end up throwing her foot all the way around the corner. So she leads with her foot, um, getting out of this, uh, this arete section. So and that, seemed, that seemed to be the crux too. This is the section yes. that bested the other, the earlier competitors. Yeah, exactly. So here she manages to find this balance, right? And actually fairly elegant. She held it with the one hand on that right bit. Um, so this looked great, like made it look good. Yanya, on her first attempt, she just flew out of that corner and just like tried to go dynamic uh, into the inside corner, which didn't work out. Her, uh, her second attempt, the one that she actually topped it on though, uh, we played this already, but we'll just show it again for the sake of it. Um, she did it a bit smoother. I yeah, I enjoyed this problem a lot. I really like these blocks volumes, and my like blocks representative friends will hopefully appreciate that comment. Um, yeah, the, this was a really striking problem. I thought the the aesthetics of the problem overall were really good. Um, I loved seeing some some like classic U.S. pulling in the roof that women's number four, which we'll talk about in a second, having the potential for a 360 pocket campus. That mm -hmm. uh, was rad. But anyway, and, yeah. and it's it, it was nice that it was a kind of a 
they did this a couple times where this the top hold the finishing move was was kind of low percentage because they would put some blocking uh, holds on top of it. There was another one, I can't remember which one it was. Maybe in the semifinals where it was like a I think it was like a cheetah and a blocks were yep. like together. Um, no, they had that in finals. Uh, men's number fin shit. I can't remember which. We'll see it in a, in a minute. But, and I guess this one that didn't look that low percentage. She grabbed it pretty easily. But uh, but I you know it's just kind of it's always fun when the top move. It's like there's two ways the top move can go. It's either it's either going to be this really hard like like precision move or it's going to be this huge jug that that the crowd loves right that you can just like lunch for it. sure yeah, um, yeah well my like can you imagine if that problem didn't have the blocker do you think it would be a huge difference in how it climbs like i'm trying to i guess if you were at the arete but you hadn't come around the corner yet maybe you could just say i'm going to line up for this dino and just hope the friction's good enough um but it, yeah. I, I don't know if it was an aesthetic choice or a functional one but uh but cool either way i want to find that men's i one. think I think people would just launch from the arete to the finish if it was a great jug. I, yeah. I, I, I think that it was um, the in terms of forcing movement, I think having that blocking hold on the on the top uh, forced you to come around the arete and then go for it rather than just Maybe, kind of yeah. lunging for it. Yeah, and this was the men's one, which was very similar in style. So a lot of like vertical volumes trying to just like making a lateral compression and stuff, yeah. getting up it and then a block to finish as well. Yeah, um, do you think they did? Do you think they? It's just so curious. Like, why didn't they just put a block, another blocks hold or whatever? Like, the cheetah one kind of sticks out, and I'm wondering if they, if they did it as like a troll thing, or if they did it just to give some love to cheetah. It's just kind of funny. Who knows? Um, it's man. Like, it's like it's like which one of these things is not like the other? You know? Yeah, yeah. That's. I think of. Uh, so I don't actually have. I didn't pull any video of climbing on this, but there is. Where is it? Please tell me I loaded it up. Actually, I'm going to add a thing while we're recording this. Okay, so, like, Adam didn't top this, and this was one of my, like, I thought this was a really good comp for just straight-up emotion. Um, like, you saw some people were just, like, really happy um, and and happy with their climbing. Like, Miho looked uh, excellent the entire time. She was just, like, seemed kind of just happy to be there sort of deal. I'm um, sorry, I got to... That's all right get through this stuff um same thing with um uh mao nakamura too like she was obviously somebody that was really happy to f like hit a world cup final in her uh, in her last uh event of the season here we go yeah and loose duati too yes right? yeah, um, yeah she she was really stoked to be there rightly so yeah and then adam total opposite yeah like yeah, this, was this the one where he yells? He like yes. he like bellows. He's gonna yeah. yell right now at the guy who is super like that photographer does not know how to take that kind yeah. of aggression, and then just like here's the big I think the big screams right here. Yeah, it's coming. There it is. Yeah, yeah. That's uh. Anyway, yeah, and I mean it was a big competition for him. He needed to do decently. Yeah, and that's the weird thing is like he could have had the season locked up if he came what first or second, uh, mm -hmm. but it was a rough comp. Dude ended uh, what fifth? Yeah, yeah, and I don't I don't know the statistics, but when when was the last time that Andre was in a finals and and finished like l like fifth or sixth? You know, I it's it's got to be it, it's not very often, right? Let me check. Um, I mean, just from a from a purely standpoint fan standpoint, I'm just like not used to seeing his name so low in the uh in the results of the final so, yeah it looks like it's happened like oh shit actually uh arco 2018 and arco 2016 he made finals but finished fourth and fifth okay um but again like the last time he was doing bouldering world cups like how far do i have to go back was was it actually 2015 oh he did munich in 2015 um oh he did a bunch in yeah okay so yeah, no, he's missed finals, but yeah, you're right. To get him in finals and not do well. The hard thing with Adam is just because he takes seasons off, right? So, like, yeah. sometimes it's it's hard to actually know what you're talking about. Where am I? There we are. Uh, yeah, he, like, disappears for seasons and just climbs outside. So his track record is really hard to gauge because, you know, he's around for one year, disappears for another, and then it's all yeah. over. But, uh, yeah. It's 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 going to be interesting in that sense to assess his career when all is said and done uh, mm -hmm. from a competition standpoint because... I, I can't help but think, as great as he's been, legendary competition-wise, um, 
there, like, there are going to be these questions of like, what if, you know, because he'll have these phenomenal seasons and then he'll just take the next year off. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, I mean, take it off, meaning like go and crush five sixteen out. Yeah, exactly. Right. But like, but from a competition standpoint, it's like, well, he did. What if he would have stayed in on the competition circuit consistently? Um, you know, would we be talking about, um, I, I mean, we, Already people talk about him as one of the, if not the greatest male competition climbers. But um, there are, I just feel like those questions are going to be valid. Well, yeah, that's the thing is I, I like, I, in a lot of, like, I love having him at World Cups and I have more fun when he's at World Cups. But I think to some extent, like, he doesn't have to be here. He's, I feel like he's kind of doing us as spectators a favor, just showing up sometimes because he's like, he's in the running for the greatest climber, like full stop ever um i'm sure he would like to add a gold medal to that that would be an excellent you know way to to finish that sentence a gold medal is a really good period at the end of a sentence like that um but like it doesn't like it part of it doesn't even matter what the rest of his competition career is like because you know he's got like i don't know how many years but i don't think he's done his hardest climb yet he's only going to push it further and further so he's getting to define this entire era of sport climbing um, mostly outdoors, somewhat competition wise, but I, I'm not sure how much he cares. Honestly, I don't think it bothers him that he skips a year or so in terms of judging him as a competition climber. I like, I feel like you can only judge people based on the events they showed up for, um, which is like fair, but so much, so many of the stats we talk about, like how many medals, have you won in your career? I hate that stat, but how many medals have you won in your career? How many events did you sweep? Those kind of metrics get fucked up if you don't show up a lot, right? It changes. Like somebody that's the same age as him, I think Shauna Coxie was born the same year as him. Shauna shows up for all the events when she's not injured. She's going to rack up more medals than he does because he just bails every other year. So it is. it does make it kind of hard to, to compare them uh, with other like uh, contemporaries. That's fair. Yeah, and I don't know if he would even be on the circuit if not for the Olympics. I, I would I would be very surprised if he would have any interest in competing um, if there wasn't that potential gold medal. Like I, like, I kind of think of this season as what he's doing is kind of getting back in comp shape or comp mindset mm-hmm. and kind of comp stoke for the Olympics. Yeah. Um, and if if the gold medal wasn't a possibility, I... Yeah, I don't know if he would do it because yeah. he's he seems to be doing fine outdoors in terms of notor- you know, in terms of like fame and money and sponsorship and all this other stuff. Totally. So. Yeah. Well, so going into the season, like Adam and Yanya were basically the two people that I in my head I'm like I am 100% certain that they will get to the Olympics and they'll qualify through the World Championship, right? Like I basically thought there was no doubt, but just to keep track of the rankings to get to the Toulouse event, I figured Yanya and Adam would be the only two people who would have their calculated score as two first places in bouldering, two first places in lead, and then some random like speed rankings, right? Adam didn't achieve two first places this season. He got like a first and two seconds, um, which is yeah. still great. Um, but that, that threw me off. Like I thought he would be more dominant, uh, a boulder this season. And, uh, it's kind of rough. And yeah, again, he yeah. doesn't end with the gold medal uh, in the, the overall season ranking, which is really too bad for him because he was off to an excellent start. Uh, but Tomoa takes it. And that, that brutal thing that uh, that was mentioned is that Tomoa only attended four events, right? Yeah. Um, so he didn't even like Tomoa could have possibly have won it by an even further margin if he had showed up for a fifth event. Uh, so that's like, yeah, that's that is kind of um uh, what are you trying to say? Like kind of snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Like it's it, it's too bad because I thought he would be the season, the winner. Just to go over this stuff since we're there, uh, your ranking or your season champions, first place is Tomoe Narasaki, second place Adam Andra, and then third place Yoshiyuki Ogata, who yeah. I didn't think was really in the running, except he makes finals and then wins, which we yeah. may not have mentioned this episode so far either. Yoshiyuki won his first bouldering world cup uh at vale uh so i wrote about this too i I wrote about you know it's funny because uh i I feel like we were so preoccupied with this idea of like is it going to be andra or is it going to be uh tomoa narasaki uh winning the overall Mm -hmm. and that it's it's almost like yoshiyuki um (laughs) it's like he kind of snuck in there and 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 won vale 
uh, almost like quietly. And I, I think yeah. that, I, that I said like as quietly as like topping every single boulder of the weekend can be done. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, it's, it's like, but it, I just feel like it was kind of Yoshiki was sort of this, it was an underreported f- <laughs> element until like maybe the last like boulder, like two mm-hmm. boulders. And then we're like, Oh yeah. Like Yoshiki could win this whole competition. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it was one of those stories that the people watching it without any sense of seasonal context would have been more engaged and they would have been hyped about that. But for all of us who like, I lit like was honestly really just tuning in to find out if Yanya sweeps the full season. And then after that, I had a lot of trouble focusing on the men's field, which is too bad because the, the problems, at this event were actually excellent. The separation was excellent. And even with all of those top climbers that I can't argue with the results at all. Like those, those problems were fair. Those problems were varied. Uh, and Yoshiki won that thing hands down climbing and just topping problems that some of the best climbers in the world cough at Amandra, like could not top. Uh, yeah. So that was a, a huge deal. Like that was like a, an incredibly well deserved win. He was the only guy to top them all. Everybody else kind of like fluffed around on one problem or another. Namely, well, in this case, like I guess Tomoa and Zhang Wan were the other guys that got three tops, but Tomoa couldn't do the final one, which is baffling to me. Um, and then Zhang Wan couldn't do three, which is more reasonable because that one was like freaking hard and it screwed up. It was that that slab one that we were just looking at. Um, let's actually, yeah, I've got uh, I've got uh, Yoshiyuki winning the comp on men's number four. This was my favorite problem, just because it was again, <laughs> I like simple problems that are easily broken down. So a dynamic move, and then just dealing with a pretty much vertical rail. Um, requiring lots of like body tension to control that and generate momentum off it into pretty much a, like a terrible crimp side pull. Uh, yeah, and in this, this case, move, basically an undercling. Like, holy shit. Yeah, that, that move was the crux, like getting like positivity off of that hold, and he just cruised through it, that yeah. rail there. Yeah, yeah, um, destroyed he, I mean, he didn't even, like that, that was the struggle, and he didn't even, he didn't even really pause at it. So, yeah. um, yeah, it was yeah, one of those tops, like when Kai Harada topped number four in, uh, was it Wu Jiang or, or whichever? It was the one that nobody could top. It just had a, a really rough, like, huge ending, and then somebody comes out of nowhere and just says, okay, this is easy. Watch me do yep. this. Um, yeah, no, sick. And was, this was really cool, seeing all these guys, like, actually, uh, I don't know. I think there's probably some kind of, like, maybe a cathartic, no, that's not the right word, but with Tomoa and Adam going head-to-head, maybe there was this kind of... We can all chill out now, now that somebody else has won. It doesn't have to be you versus... I don't know. It was a nice moment. Yeah. It was cool to see somebody new win that came not out of nowhere, but, you know, it's not the person we were expecting. Um, yeah. That was really cool. It was cool. And, you know, one of the things... So I had mentioned this to you on Twitter um, that... So if we go... If we look back at... Can, can you replay that uh, his attempt on that, that problem there? On four? Yeah. Yeah. So this opening move, was this move here, this jump, this dynamic move right here was that supposed to be a hard move because the like literally every single competitor like cruised it um and it was also it was kind of similar to on women's four there was this opening jump that i think uh (laughs) even did statically um yeah okay like i was watching these and i was like it seems like the route setters and this is not a knock on the specific route setters there but just in general like the route setters uh this season it seems like what they thought would be a hard dynamic move, coordination move, paddle dyno, whatever, uh, very rarely seem to pose much of a threat to the competitors. Um, Let me play, uh, who do I have on four? I've got Akio and Yanya on four. Let's start with Akio's just well, because that'll, because she just statics this move. Yeah, which was, I think, intended to be dynamic. When you look at just the the way it's shaped, you assume it's supposed to be a dynamic two yeah. hand. Like there's no way they just put up like a a dinky little like reach left right left right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's a that's a really fair point in that, and you you hear commentators talk about it all the time, like not being able to gauge what something climbs like from the ground. Right, you look at it and stuff can look so much bigger. Um, uh, when you're just like looking at it rather than climbing it, but that that move in particular, I'll get with you on this one. Um, because it was a static move for not just Takiyo, but also Yanya and maybe some of the other climbers. I didn't. Uh, I don't remember too closely. Um, yeah. This was a very Vale style 
uh, Boulder too with the yes. pocket, the overhang pockets. I feel like that's a like the overhang pockets is like a veil. It seems to be like a veil thing. Totally, it's, in my mind. it is the it is the you know I was hoping it was going to end up being like a cut feet sort of thing, um, and I yeah. feel like that must be what they wanted too because and you know I'll play Yanya's one, and of course when we get to the top of this we have to talk about something else, but. It just looked so pedestrian in terms of how it climbs. Like yeah. a little like stand up thing to two fairly juggy holds. And these are good pockets for the most part. Um, but I don't know. It's the first half of this just looks so, uh, so simple. I don't know. Do you think when they set this, they were like, hey guys, this is the problem where we're going to crown somebody a season sweeper? Do you think like there was any. Any planning of trying to make it a problem that Yanya saw success on? Like, do you think they wanted to make sure that this moment right here happened at the top of the wall and not on the ground? Oh, that's interesting. I, uh, yeah, maybe. I, I don't know because we've talked about this before. Where I, I don't think we, I don't think they set these things with a specific competitor in mind, um, and we certainly hope they don't. Uh, but it definitely seemed to be perfectly suited for, like, a victorious <laughs> celebration, right? Yeah. Um, it, I mean, yeah, in a lot of ways, it was kind of like the perfect boulder for her to to have to, to clinch this victory because it was, um, it was just the upper section was, uh, it was just perfect. <laughs> yeah, maybe, like, part of me was thinking maybe it's a bit of a gimme just yeah. to make sure... That if this like history does happen, that she gets to have this moment where the crowd like because again like most of that crowd probably wasn't aware that it had this extra history behind it right like there are a lot of casual viewers at that event because it's a huge festival from like dog jumping competitions to to like mountain biking and running and all this kind of stuff. I'm willing to guess more than fifty percent of the audience doesn't couldn't like explain the basic rules of bouldering. Um, so a lot of people weren't going to understand why her winning the event by itself was a big deal. So giving them the chance to get her to the top, which would create that audience reaction regardless, I think yeah. that may have been a bit choreographed and I appreciate it if only because it did work. Um, yeah. You got the crowd just like going absolutely nuts. And I'm assuming having the video of her on the big screen um, adjacent to the wall, just being that emotional probably uh, made it clear to anybody that wasn't aware that it was yeah. a, a really big deal. Um, and I'm not sure what the MC was talking about. I, I should have probably listened to that because I'd love to hear how he, um, like the venue MC, not the commentators, because again, the audience can't hear uh, Charlie and um, Tiffany in this case. They can only hear the venue MC. And I, I, I'm, you know what? I'm going to listen back to that later and and hear what he was uh, what he was saying because he would have been like really instrumental in that moment um, in getting the audience to understand like why this is important. So uh, shout out yeah. to him. I, I don't even know if he did a good job or not. It's a hard job. There's a lot of yelling. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, it, and another thing. Speaking of the MC, a cool moment was the. Uh, that like the crowd together to make that like whatever it is the the Eiffel Tower uh, symbol. You know I it clipped was... it. You know I clipped nice. it. Nice. Here yeah. we go. Yeah. So, so this was shout out to Eddie there. I'll let you explain this. You can go ahead. Okay. So the deal is um, climbing in 2024 is um, it's not it's not for sure yet. Um, the IOC is going to deliberate in a month. I think it's been proposed and they're going to have discussions in a in a month. And the the 2024 Olympics would be in Paris. And so uh, to kind of fuel, uh, a, a, to make a photograph that Eddie Falk here, the photographer, could take to the IOC and kind of show them the, the community support for climbing in the 2024 20, Olympics, he had everybody make a, an Eiffel Tower uh, symbol with their hands. And as I just thought it was kind of cool because I feel like other sports, I don't know if everybody would come together like that like to you know you, you'd get people like throwing beer cans or something um <laughs> like these rowdy sports fans and i just thought it was cool that everybody um went along with it and and uh helped out so because you know you know there's people in the in the crowd there that aren't probably climbers and they're like what what like what is this all about but they still I, uh, did, did it anyway so. i love the amount of people that were just like doing the illuminati thing like not fully right. understanding or like, just the, like, like the heart the what I is it you, it's this like, this little deal or some i, I don't know anyway or something? What, i don't know you're linking your fingers is it 
Two I don't fingers? Know. Let's go with <laughs> anyway, there you go. That's yeah. me supporting <laughs> climbing yeah. in the Olympics. Uh, we uh, should have started out the broadcast with uh, <laughs> both of us doing this in solidarity. It means uh, hello and goodbye. Right. That's yes. that's that's what it is. Yeah, that was a cool moment. It was uh it was yeah, it was a it was a, just a nice moment. It was kind of odd the timing being dead center in the middle of the men's final, but everybody was still there like watching. So whatever, totally cool. It was a neat thing. I hope uh, I hope the photo turns out well. I'm sure he'll share it if he hasn't already. I think he put a, a, a like a a little grab of it on his on his Instagram. Okay, um, good. But I don't think he put the big panoramic shot up there. So. Right. Yeah. 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 No, it was a uh, like I I. I think I, I kind of want to wrap up because I'm not sure how much more I have to uh, to talk about this. It was it was one of those like, try to, is there anything stupid that I'm forgetting? Let me just check my notes. Well, we could do grades, um, overall grades for the event. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and uh, we could do favorite. So you said your favorite problem was men's four. Yeah. And my favorite problem was, I liked men's four, but probably women's three, which we already went over, the yeah. one with the, the big black and white dual techs. Uh, I just thought that was... A lot of cool movement and really aesthetic and stuff. So yeah. um, that was my favorite favorite moment of the comp, without question. Yanya, uh, not only her her send her flash of women's four, but just the emotion afterwards. And mm -hmm. It was awesome, really cool. Uh, it's interesting though when you get into what would be your second favorite moment of the competition because that's a little harder to choose. Yes, um, I don't know what. I don't know what I would choose for that second. I don't know if I, I feel like I made you go first last time, so I'm I'm just gonna. Or do you want to do best moments or like second best moment in this case? Or yeah, do you want to do? Yeah, I, I don't know. I have not thought about second best moment off. I, I don't know if I like, I haven't really thought about it, um, yeah. but if you have one. I'd be curious. Ugh, I So like it's, there's three of them. And again, these are things that I just liked because they, there was like personality in them. So the three are uh, Yoshiyuki and the boys just having a good old, you know, hug. Right. That was, yeah. It, I think there there was kind of a release of this is finally over, you know, great job to him. Uh, the other thing was Sean going to town on men's number one because it made me remember like how lovable he is as a competitor. He's so good on the stage. He's so much fun to watch. He definitely starts making decisions at some point based on what can I do that's going to be entertaining. Uh, and that was just like, fuck, I'm like such a fan of this guy when he's on fire like he's such a great competitor and then lastly i don't know if i should be calling this a favorite moment but seeing adam just like lose it after men's number three i don't feel like there is enough sometimes i feel like competitors um are almost like just happy to be there and if there is that like deep competitive like lizard brain animal instinct to win and be the best it doesn't get shown that often and that was one of those few moments where it's obvious that this guy like cares about one thing and he hates failure more than he loves winning probably and that was just reassuring to me almost knowing that climbers have that in them um because it makes it much easier to be a fan if you believe that you're you know being fanatical about an athlete who is also a fanatic over this stuff. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. And that's why it's so great. These competitors, they have different personalities and that's why we like watching them so much. Like if you like, that's, that's part of Andre's appeal is that he's so emotional, um, both in victory and defeat. And, uh, you know, if you would take like Sean's, charisma and the way that Sean like you said sort of like knows what the crowd might like in certain cases if you applied that to Andra it just wouldn't work it wouldn't really feel right right that's <laughs> um because Andra's not a showman in that way yeah and that's and that's that's a wonderful quality that each of them have individually and it's kind of like their own thing um and that's great it's nice that we just have that diverse mm -hmm. that diversity of personalities um and I, yeah, you don't want to call Andres, you know, it's hard to call that a favorite moment, but certainly a, just an interesting moment. And um, I feel bad saying it's a favorite because it's obviously like kind of a, an expression of negative energy, but it was a favorite moment for me. It was like, it was a moment where there's like, a, there's, there is a fire on stage. Um, yeah. So I love that. Yeah. Uh, another one for me that, uh, that didn't get, it got overshadowed immediately was Akio's send of women's four um, because it happened right before 
Yanya flashed it and, right. and won the and swept the season. But it was a really cool moment because Akio had to really work for it. Um, and she got it. I think there were, she was into her last minute of attempts uh, of time when she when she finally sent it. Uh, and the crowd went wild because I think up to that point, they weren't sure if anybody was going to top that one. Um, and so I'm trying to – I think Akio was the first one to top it. Let me look at my notes here. Uh, yeah, so um, – so the three competitors before Akio didn't did not top it, and then mm-hmm. Akio did, and the crowd really went crazy, and uh, it was a really cool moment. And then like you know a minute later, Yanya flashes it, and it kind of gets it kind of gets the Akio stuff yeah. kind of gets lost. But it was a really cool moment in its in its context in its time. I need to give an honorable mention to definitely like the worst moment of the comp yeah. is having to be Fanny Gibert go out as the first seed oh. on a women's number four after like history has been made and there's nothing you can do. The best you can do is get a bronze medal. Like I don't know exactly what the prize money is. And I know that these guys are fighting for ranking points to, to get to the Olympics, but I, I think me not being very logical and making bad decisions decisions based on emotions on the fly, if I was her, I would have come out and I would have just been like, I'm not climbing this. It's done. Like, yeah. I cannot possibly pretend that these next four minutes of my climbing matter to anybody forever. Like, that sucked for her. Um, she got the zone. She didn't get the top. She was there for the four, like full four minutes. Rough, man. It really rough. And she was a trooper. She she did not top it, but she gave it a good effort for the full four minutes. Um, it, it, there's a lot though that uh, that it was an unfortunate way for Fanny to end her bouldering season because I do in a lot of ways feel like this season was a huge success for her. Hell yeah! Uh, she has essentially become to comp fans. If she was not already, she's become kind of like a household name, um, and she certainly. Uh, solidified herself as one of France's, if not like the big Olympic hopeful, certainly right up there. Yeah. Um, so I just, it's just too bad that that's kind of the the last m- moment we have from her season. When in fact her bouldering season, I think was was phenomenal. I think. Yeah, that, she, you know. she like again the top three of the season, like in the rankings. It also just you know by the eye test, you would say the season was. Yanya, Akio, Fanny. Those were the names that were there every single time. Although Fanny missed one or two. F- one or two? Anyway, she was yeah. there for at least four of them. I can't remember if she if she missed one or two finals. Um Yeah, she she had a a great season, and I think at this point she's only there because she wants a win. Um she's gonna have to fight through a lot. And maybe at the start of this event, like things were, you know, um, there was enough uncertainty that maybe I hope she didn't start to think in her head, this might be the one I win. Right. Because she was only leading by what, like attempts in the first couple problems. And if there's a lesson we've learned so far, it doesn't matter if you're beating Yanya in attempts, like you have to beat her in tops because she's going to top fucking everything. So attempts don't matter at this point. You just have to realize that Yanya is going to top them all and you have to do better. Yeah. That's but but it did create I don't know if Fanny is planning on doing the lead circuit, but uh, I hope she does because I'm really curious to see how she does or how she would do uh, on a rope. Yeah, I, I imagine she must be. Let me just see if she's got like much of a lead. So she did a bunch of lead stuff last year. Um, but that, whoa. Yeah, she, okay, so she didn't do any lead in her entire open career until last year. Hmm. Um, where she did what two events yeah she just did the the chinese uh ones so like i mean After i don't we, even a- like i don't even know if she's on the french team for lead we'll have to right. like find out so who knows yeah but it'd be cool to, i hope she is i hope she does it, it mm-hmm. that'd be really exciting i'm really curious to see how much this momentum from bouldering season could transfer to lead season for her. Yeah. Cause I you talk about her being like the French hopeful. I would be right there with you. Like yeah. I, it seems like Manuel Cornu just because he's had, you know, that one really good <laughs> bouldering event might be one of the guys that's in contention. But if Fanny's season looks anything like this, she's certainly the foremost woman. Um, I mean, Anna Jobert is obviously an incredible speed climber, but yeah. Like, you know, we'll uh, we'll see what happens. Am I, I feel like I'm missing somebody. Am I being an idiot? France always seems to bring people out of the woodwork. I mean, they have 
incredible depth on their team. So, uh, so it, who knows? But um, I'm just making sure I'm not making a huge error well, of well, Luce uh, Duati. <laughs> I mean, now is you know she's she's right there too. She proved that she can make it to a finals. And, sure, yeah, yeah. You know, I get, I yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like one time. Sorry, I should face the mic. One one win or one finals isn't enough for me just yet. Yeah. Like we've seen yeah. a lot of those yeah. kids, but yeah. All right, let's wrap it up with um, grading of the comp because I feel like we'll talk about this for a little bit. I cannot remember what I gave Munich, but I remember it was high, maybe an A. Mm. Uh, I would give this whatever grade I gave Munich the same the same grade. I thought it was on par with it. I remember one of the things that we said was so great about Munich was the crowd. I thought the crowd at Vale, it's a different type of crowd. It's outdoors. It's a, it's this festival atmosphere. But I thought that they they were just as energetic in their own way as the Munich crowd. Mm-hmm. Um, I uh, I really enjoy. I just didn't, I enjoyed it the whole time. The compelling storylines, fantastic route setting and and separation. Um, I just can't think of any particular reasons why it deserves why it would deserve low marks. So. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm actually doing the same thing as you, whereas I'm going to grade it the same as Munich. But in Munich, we had the discussion where I needed to bump up my rating of Meringen, like posthumously, because yes. I didn't want to give Meringen an A+, plus because I didn't want to imagine that that was the very best that there could be. So I said it was an A just in case something was better. Um, so I'm going to give this an A-, minus because it wasn't as good as Meringen. But now I'm like, do I have to rewatch Merrigan? Was it actually as good as I think it was? But it had that incredible benefit of the very final problem of the comp being the hand jam and the very final athlete of the event flashing it when nobody else did. And I yeah. like it is a well, I don't want to say it's a reality of climbing, but it is a reality of this particular format where that is unpredictable, right? Um so I, I, I'm going to give it an A minus. It was a really good comp. Um, it had obviously some incredible history with it, but that moment of the hand jam, like if we're just going to talk season wide, nothing tops that like the, on the women's side, I will just say the story is Yanya sweep, which is incredible. But aside from her show of emotion in this round, it, it, you know, it, it didn't have like one particular moment attached. It was a slow burn throughout the season. We saw it coming. It wasn't a surprise, but that, freaking hand jam was like I, I it's the kind yeah. of thing where i want to you know what we should grab uh we should grab angle from on bouldering and just be like hey man what tops this yeah um but uh anyway i'll talk to him well, and maybe we'll do something but yeah it's really hard to compare this competition with mute with mayringen because mayringen had n- it was the first one of the season so it had no context beyond sure. the competition itself yeah uh whereas this one you know, there's history that is made and Munich too with Yanya um, winning the season and it's, mm-hmm. and then this and Veil with her sweeping the season. Uh, you know, we have, there's just so much greater context when we're rating these, when we're grading these recent competitions compared to Mayringen. It's, it's almost just hard to, it's like we would have to go back and watch Mayringen now knowing I'm going all to. the context. Yeah. That you know that would come of it because mm-hmm. it, because in a way yeah I think the Meringen re- grade would only go up because um, because it's the, it's the I mean it's the onset of this remarkable run that that um, that Yanya went on mm-hmm. you know and that uh, that's where it all started so um, yeah it's tough to compare yeah no so anyway but, I... but that crack the, the the crack problem that's got to be considered one of if not the highlight of the season that was just Definitely. so exciting but you know it's interesting because if andra had not if that problem had not been suited to andra um and he had not won that competition because of kind of favorable route setting mm-hmm. not not you know um th- whew, his season would have been a lot different sure he yeah he wouldn't have won any like i think he wouldn't he... have won any you probably would have we probably would have been thinking that his season was do you think it's fair to say it, it, like we would have looked at it as a pretty big disappointment then. Um, I don't know because I think the reason I look at his season as a bit of a disappointment now is because it started with that peak, okay. and I just yeah. got accustomed to like Adam Andra is the best climber in the world. He won a gold medal. It's obvious, right? And so everything has just like literally been 
not as good as the first event of the season. So maybe it wouldn't have been as dramatic, but I definitely would think of him differently as a climber. Just yeah. that, you know, like, oh, Anders not the kind of person that can win a Boulder World Cup this year. Like, I still think he's one of the best climbers in the world, but maybe the gold medal at the Olympics isn't a gimme. I don't know. Like, I still have Andre as my favorite to win at the Olympics. I just think his personality, I feel like he's the kind of guy that could 100% win this thing in the most incredible show ever. Um, but if he hadn't won that, then maybe I'd think of it differently. Yeah, it's just an interesting what if, because uh, especially to the, the casual fan, comp fan as much as there is such a thing i think there's a lot of people like people who are climbers that maybe don't watch every competition they just kind of assume that andra is crushing and is going to crush in the mm -hmm. competitions um and and if he had not won in mayringen you know that obviously would have been a really faulty stance to make yeah. because he wouldn't have been a, a good season at all for him but but that's what if we could do those all day you know yeah totally Let's not, though. Let's save yeah. it for some other time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, well, that pretty much wraps up yep. the bouldering season. I can't believe it's over. Yeah, this is, uh, oh, how far we've come. I'm honestly <laughs> really happy that we actually managed to commit to doing this six times in a row. Yep. We didn't, like, delay it at all. I My personal work ethic, that's that's a pretty rare thing. So It's, it's really cool. fun. It, it's really fun, and I would encourage anybody, rather than just watching, like, one comp here and there, which I think is what a lot of climbers do mm -hmm. it's really fun to watch an entire season just like it's not them it's it's six competitions just kind of commit yourself to watching every single one because it really is greater than the sum of its parts or or whatever that phrase is you know because it's just it's fun to see the storylines throughout an entire season uh and it really just kind of um it, it just it adds a lot to the 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 idea of climbing competitions when you're actually able to like put a series of them together mm. so it's really great yeah. so i'm yeah. glad we did it too and we're we'll do it for the, the lead season too so yeah everybody we, still watch got, tune in. we still have i think four more speed events six lead events we'll just have to figure out how to uh like how to do this thing i'm gonna have to screenshot way fewer climbs for sure i don't know yeah. it'll be interesting i'm i'm excited for lead season um uh yeah like we're getting to the point where we're going to start being able to do the actual calculations for who could actually make it through to the toulouse qualifier um yeah it's getting and we're only what like a we're like less than two months away or no but anyway we're in the zone now for world championships oh yeah so, yeah definitely yeah i'm excited man anyway uh to everybody out there thanks so much for for watching this for the last couple months make sure you subscribe tell your friends about it um there are buttons you can press uh like thumbs up thumbs down notifications whatever it's all good uh follow us on the social media i don't know why i've decided to do this like entire plug at the end of the season what have i done john I, <laughs> anyway thank you yeah. for watching we'll see you guys in about a month for the first lead world cup of the year until then have a have a sorry it's hello and goodbye oh yeah right right we're doing oh, this yes goodbye <laughs> whatever it is <laughs> all right peace guys bye yeah